Uh, one of the uh, most dramatic I can remember was a uh, pilot was shot down in North Vietnam. Uh, the heroics of the people who flew the helicopters and the low uh, air support, all sorts of people put their lives on the line to get that one person out. And I'll never forget the feeling when, when uh, the helicopter had the pilot in the aircraft and finally went what we call feet wet, which means he was back over the water again. There were some defining moments, and those defining moments were when uh, we would have a bad day and, and uh, guys didn't come back. Well, then that causes you to start to thinking about, well, have I taken care of all those things I should take care of? A little philosophical time, I guess you could say, was, was what uh, happened to most of us. There was a time when uh, maybe your spirituality got more of a boost than you thought it would because you came to realize that uh, I need all the help I can get and that's probably as good a place as any I can go to get it. Our ships sustained the highest losses of any carrier. 38 out of 70 planes were lost, 52 planes were damaged, and one out of every four pilots had been captured or killed. The ship and all the men on it saw their share of pain from losing one of their own. It is a very time-honored thing to be buried at sea. We would usually lose several pilots on each cruise to the Western Pacific. And uh, yeah, one of them was in the ship's company and then went to flight school and was later killed. So when you lose somebody like that, it, it hurts. It takes a while to get over it. As I say, it's rough. Uh, I, I, you know, I cried a little. And uh, uh, some we buried at sea, but we offloaded others. In addition to its heroic history, the Oriskany had a side job in acting and public appearances. In 1954, she made her film debut in a starring role in Men of the Fighting Lady and landed another starring role in The Bridges of Toko Ri. I was on board when The Bridges of Toko Ri was filmed and it was most interesting uh, to watch the filming uh, both underway and in port. Uh, I never got to meet Grace Kelly, but I did get to meet uh, Mickey Rooney and, and Earl Holloman. And Mickey Rooney, when he would be about the ship, was always entertaining a small group. And one thing I'll never forget, he said most of his money went to alimony. And in 1978, the Oriskany made a cameo appearance in the science fiction film Capricorn One. Ship USS is in, position. in the 1986 film Top Gun, Oriskany was given an honorable the mention. The 51 Oriskany. In 1963, she had a visit from President John F. Kennedy, who witnessed an operational readiness demonstration aboard the Oriskany in San Diego. Vice Admiral James Bond Stockdale served on the Oriskany. He was the vice presidential candidate in the 1992 presidential election, running with Ross Perot on the independent ticket. Another famous American aboard the USS Oriskany was John McCain, who would later become a United States Senator and a presidential candidate. Shortly after taking off from the Oriskany, he was shot down in enemy territory, taken prisoner of war, and held for five and a half years. But I'll tell you what my definition of a hero is. When you take a man and you rocket him off that catapult at 130 knots plus, and he goes over the target and he's facing who knows what, then he comes back to the ship in the middle of the ocean, in the middle of nowhere, maybe it's an inky black night, on a pitching rolling deck, 
and he has to hit that deck about 400 feet of deck with his plane if he hopes to uh, to land. Well, that's my definition of a hero. Uh, beautiful morning for North Vietnam, the Yellow Sea. As a flight of four, the first two uh, rolled in on this particular bridge that was assigned as a target and they were carrying this, one of the first precision guided weapons called a walleye. And the first weapon that was dropped vaporized the bridge. So our services were no longer required. So my flight lead and I uh, detached from the other two when uh, I believe gunners that were shooting my flight lead, I flew behind him and flew into the uh, rounds that were fired at the flight lead. I knew I was hit ended up with a broken leg and a smashed left foot. And his plane got shot up pretty bad over, over Vietnam. And he came back, he limped back out into the Gulf and got back to the Oriskany and they knew he only had one chance to get the plane on the ship. So they put a net up on the back end of the ship and he actually flew his, his plane into the net, almost like a crash landing. But he must have been one heck of a pilot because uh, he got that plane and himself down in one piece. At the uh, time I was hit, it was immediate pain. Cockpit was filled with smoke. A couple of warning lights going up. Of course, you recognize the pain, but you're still there. So uh, everything else is just falls back to training. Yeah, as we got back to the ship, I noticed the ship turning into the wind, preparing for recovery. Uh, but they'd also rigged what's called a barricade. The most critical thing is getting the airplane on the deck and flying a good pass. I flew the best pass I've flown in a long time, maybe the very best of my career. I had the motivation to do that. People are strange. I don't know about the origins of the shellback initiations probably goes back to the days when, when ships were wood and men were steel. They put you in the garbage coffin, they close the lid, and they start beating on a thing with baseball bats, and then so you're half blind, you leave there and you go to the garbage chute. Now the garbage chute is this long canvas tunnel. I think it would, what I could uh, compare it to would be crawling through the intestine of a Burmese python. And the first thing is you see the royal baby sitting in there. Now this is the fattest shell back on the ship and the guy's dressed in a diaper and you're supposed to crawl up to him and kiss his belly. And all I can think of is it's like kissing Jabba the Hutt. Uh, the officers got it just as bad as the enlisted men. But when it was all through, it brought us closer together as a crew. Uh, essentially, were the most exciting times of my life. I mean, there's nothing to compete against it. Um, it there was a good working relationship between the ship and the, um, the air wing. Uh, the ship really had a can-do attitude. There wasn't much we couldn't do. Life on the carrier was just kind of launching and recovering airplanes. We said, you know, used to say there were, uh, there were three big events a day, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and the evening movie. And flying combat hops in between was interesting, I would say, and many times it, it was fun. Uh, I personally thought, I think today, that, that my flying in, in Oriskany and from Oriskany was one of the best times of my life. I really, really enjoyed it. The team, there's always the division in the Navy and any other service between the officers and enlisted crew, but Oriskany was a very happy ship and a very productive ship, and that makes a big difference. Oh, it would always have to do with women. I mean, it was always, always, always getting in trouble with women. A lot of ladies of the night, you know, I'll take number 18, number 23, and number 24. If they can speak English, we're good to go. You know, it's that type of routine. It's a, it's a world gone past. Yeah, in, if we got in trouble, one of us would always pick up the guy, that, the person that got into trouble, pick him up, and, you know, take care of him. Oh.